Then the leader of the service said, all right, it's now time to hug Uncle O. <laughs> As we bid farewell to him, and you can be sure that took not less than 10 minutes. So we are here now. Uh, to join you in worshiping the Lord in this very significant service because it's my last service here as the chaplain of St. Francis Chapel, Makere University, and I'm so glad that the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, uh, Professor, uh, fin uh, Finance and Administration, Professor uh, Henry Aline Itwe is here. Uh, that's not enough to welcome the DVC Finance and Administration. Uh, such a great honor. Uh, the, the bishop uh, is a, a St. Franciscan, as you know, but a bishop is a bishop. We welcome you, uh, my Lord. And uh, I would like to also recognize the clergy who are here. Today the, the house is full. Thank you. Let's appreciate the clergy and uh, the pioneer uh, praise team, which is ministering today. Let us acknowledge uh, Makoral. Thank you for coming to honor me, uh, Dr. Milton Guabiona, and uh, your team there. Uh, we have worked together for. When, when did we start? 2017 is when we inaugurated uh, this very professional um, uh, music from the Department of Performing Arts and Film of Makere University. These are very professional. The, the voices are refined. Uh, and the one who was behind the keyboard, where is he? Uh, Mr. Bean, you come here. You come here. The, the one who was playing the, the piano, if you have watched Mr. Bean, this guy looks like him, but except for the hair. Except for the hair. If you have ever watched Mr. Bean, you agree. This, I think he, you, you need to trace the, your roots. <laughs> And uh, all of you, all of you who are here, but in, in a special way, please allow me to acknowledge the presence of our partners in mission. You are aware that um, I was in the U.S. for the last one month or so because God had already prepared me uh, for this. The, the course I went to do on leadership training, uh, Anglican Leadership Institute was prepared way before I was elected the bishop, so it had nothing to do with my election. But then the course, uh, the, the, the date came shortly after the announcement, so I had to leave. That's why I've not been here. We went to uh, the South Carolina. Uh, Michiga was calling it Carolina, Carolina, and uh, uh, it was a very, very powerful leadership training focusing on Paul's second letter to Timothy, and uh, the central message there is the life of a minister and finishing well, finishing well. Because it, it was uh, Paul's farewell uh, words too. So it was, it was very, very powerful. And in attendance, we were, we were participating with the bishop, Archbishop of uh, Brazil, the Anglican Church of Brazil. Um, there were bishops, two bishops from Sudan, a bishop from Burundi, uh, there was uh, people from Paraguay, 16 from the global Anglican Communion, and your chaplain was one of them. What, what an honor to, yeah. And, uh, and it was also very humbling for me because 
I discovered that each participant was supposed to participate in the kitchen uh, some two days in the week. So the, the second day I was there, I saw the Archbishop of Brazil washing dishes and doing this. And I noticed there's a following day, there was Onesimus, there was Julian, there was, so I, I first of all inquired, so how do you do this? How do you, uh, how do you put plates in, in a, uh, a wash, a, what is it called, a dish washer? Uh, I was about to put the, the plate with all the food particles, but somebody said, no, you first rinse. And so, uh, so I, I learned. How, how to, to wash dishes. Uh, I learned how to even bake. I, I, I baked uh, uh, muffins, American muffins. And uh, the, the evidence is there, but I didn't prepare the pictures. So I am now a servant leader by excellence. <laughs> and after that training for three weeks, I was uh, humbly uh, invited by Christ Church, which is our, as you know, since 1990, they've been our partners in mission uh, since the time of, of Dr. Allison when she was serving there, uh, and the time of Uncle Ben. And then, of course, that link is also extended through St. Francis Chapel to northern Uganda. And so Christ Church, Overland Park, uh, in Kansas City, they, they say city, city. They invite, but, but now that I'm here, city, city. <laughs> and, um, and then I was hosted by the most amazing couple that I have ever seen. Most amazing. Uh, they fed me until I was fed up. <laughs> like Idi Amin. And they're right here. Joel and Tracy Rosenthal. Now, uh, 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 please, uh, uh, Tracy, please remain standing. Now, this is the first time Tracy is in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, the husband has been here, like he made about 20 trips or so. But this is the first time Tracy is in Uganda. And so, welcome. Uh, they have come to attend my consecration. But they came in advance, a uh, week in advance, to spend some time with us. They're going to northern Uganda. And uh, as is our tradition, I would like to invite you, Joel, at least, to say hi uh, to this congregation. This man is... Uh, uh, is, is an amazing mobilizer. And they love St. Francis Chapel. The, his heart is, uh, is here in Uganda, even when he lives in the U.S. His heart is in Uganda. So please bring greetings. Praise the Lord. Hello, St. Francis. It's good to be home. This is where I've worshiped for 19 years when I'm in Uganda. <laughs> Reverend Onesimus, uh, Reverend Patrick sent me and brings, uh, asked me to bring his greetings to you and to this church. Your brother, Reverend Patrick, who you've ministered in northern Uganda with, you've known each other for 20 plus years, and he loves you, and he's so happy that God has called you to this next chapter of service. Um, so for 19 years, my beautiful wife, Tracy, has sent me, and she has sent both of our children and many of our friends. But it humbles me that she is here today. Yeah, and uh, it's wonderful to do ministry with you. Um, so you remember our churches do ministry together in northern Uganda, and we'll be going again in July. So if you think about God calling you to ministry in northern Uganda with friends from America, talk to Pastor Dennis and we'll put it together, but we'd love to serve together. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Welcome, welcome. And the team you came with, uh, I see Steve, Stephen. Is that uh, who is sitting next to you? Aha, uh -huh, good. And uh, and Gab and and uh, you know Tisha. I know you're part of that family. So welcome, and we also welcome our friends uh, Martin and Bear. And uh, I'm sure that's a visiting friend. Oh, that's your brother coming all the way from Germany. We bless the Lord. I am aware that some other people will be joining us. People have traveled uh, from the U.S. and others will join uh, from, from the U.K. So let's not only welcome in North Kigezi people from America and then we don't see St. Franciscans. Amen. And, and yes, Christ Church has graciously blessed me with you, you, you have seen bishops wearing things like around them? Uh-huh. Something like uh, a dress, but <laughs> it's called a cop. The one they put on top of, and then a big hat that goes up. I don't know how tall mine will be. I think I'm going to be the tallest uh, bishop. And that big thing going up, it's called a mitre. Christ Church has, has bought them for me. Amen. So we, we thank God for our partnership, and I'm praying that it will grow from strength to strength. Even the, the next chaplain that will come in, I pray that they will treat that partnership seriously because it's a blessing, especially to the people of northern Uganda. Now, I need to preach, but I'll try and be brief. So I will try. I preached at their church last Sunday. They gave me a few minutes, but I, I, was, I was good. I was good. I'm told I went beyond by one second. Uh, I'll not mention the, the number of minutes, but I went beyond by one second. Now, for African standards, I performed very well. I know of a bishop from Uganda here when we were providing spiritual oversight in the U.S. Uh, when the Episcopal Church um, went crazy. So one bishop from Uganda visited. We were bishops. In, uh, they were Ugandans. They were bishops in, uh, in America. So one bishop visited a certain parish that I will not mention. He was given 20 minutes to preach and he preached for one hour. Yeah. He never went back. <laughs> so I will try and be brief so that in the future I may also be invited back. You know now, coming back will be by invitation. And I, I prepared quite a number of sermons. But just last night, the Lord said, no, this, this is what I would like you to say. So totally different from what I had prepared. And I, I must apologize. I was told um, there was a miscommunication about the Friday night of prayer. I, I, there was a change earlier, but... Um, there are people, I'm told people came and filled, they, they, they went out because they, they knew it was going to be my last. No, it's not, it's not my last. I will still come. I will still come. Now that one, I don't need an invitation because no one will stop me from praying. So one of those nights, you will see me. I can give you that guarantee. Yeah, I can give you that guarantee. For praying, I'm unstoppable. So this is the word. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after those sayings, uh, Jesus has revealed himself uh, to the, his disciples as the Messiah. Remember when Peter said, 
you are the Christ. Who do people say I am? Some said you are a prophet. Others, but who do you say I am? And Peter got it right. He was spot on. And Jesus said to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And, and so on. So a lot is happening. I'm not going back into the background. So Jesus took Peter, John, and James, and went up on the mountain to pray. It was the habit of Jesus to withdraw and spend sleepless nights on, on, on a prayer uh, uh, praying, on a prayer mountain praying. Spent the night out there. And there are other scriptures. The life of Jesus was a life of prayer interrupted by ministry. Ministry of healing, opening the eyes of the blind, uh, the, the paralyzed, uh, set free. But his life was a life of prayer. And I pray that this will be your life. The, the first Sunday I was here as a chaplain, I gave a clarion call, and that was to pray. We can preach, we can do many things, we can, but first things first. I said, I'm here to mobilize the church to pray. And, and the nights of prayer, which were attended by 40 people, and they would say that that was a big number, and they would leave at midnight, now started growing, because I would come myself. I could never delegate prayer. And we travailed together. We, we, we prayed together all night long. And the following day, by the way, I would be having weddings to do. But I would be here the whole night. And the numbers started growing from 40 to 100, 200 to 1,000 to 1,600. And now you come, you fill this place, and there's even an overflow out there for an overnight. I was reading about the, the Asbury University revival in, in Kentucky. Students now in Asbury University, they come, they fill the chapel. This is the first time it is happening there. They fill the chapel, they, like we do it in the mid, midweek service. They, they come up here, the students, they start praying together, they confess their sins, they, they repent. They had never seen that in, in, in that part of, of America. It is happening. The revival is happening. In fact, the, 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 the stores, the shopping malls, are now complaining that people are coming from several states and parking their vehicles uh, where the, now the customers, their customers have nowhere to park. They park and go to the university to also part, partake of, of what the Lord is doing in that university. The, the university administration had to actually sort of stop it because they had spent about two weeks without attending lectures. But praying, repenting of sins, and, and, and I was telling them, for us, we've been seeing this at Makerere. And we thank God because it came as a result of prayer. When we prayed, we asked God to take charge. And then that very first Sunday, I knelt here in every service. I knelt here. And, and this is what I said. And those of you who are here, you are witnesses. I said, I receive the authority that you have given me and also the authority of the university entrusted to me. I refuse, I nullify, I refuse to inherit every negative legacy. This is what I was saying here. And I said, Lord, I take this church 
from the hands of men and I give it to you. This is what I said here. And the Lord took charge. I've never said my chapel, my what. I hear people saying my church, my Christians, my... They're not yours. They're not yours. Jesus, Jesus said to Peter, feed my lambs. It is also written in 1 Peter 5. Feed the flock of God. The flock is the Lord's. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And by the way, he never said, feed on my lambs. Like some do. Like some do. They, they, they start extorting money from the Christians. I've never asked any one of you to give me money. They, they, they touch little girls and, and you know, I've never touched any one of you. The, the, the bigger women among you have been my sisters, the little ones, the young ones, my, my daughters. I have I've never, the, the chapel council is here, I have never touched money that does not belong to me. So, I want to thank God that as a result of prayer, we have seen revival, we have seen the university has been calm for the last five years. There's never been a serious strike here. There's never been a serious strike in, those, in the last five years. There, there are times when they would try and some other students would say, no, we are, we are not part of this. That never used to happen. They, they, would, they would now touch the faculty, they say, let us mobilize the professors, the lecturers for industrial action. Some would lay down their tools, others would say, no, for us we'll continue to teach. That had never happened here. We took authority over demons that were controlling Makerere. The demons of violence, the demons of strikes, and, and we started in this church, I started by cleansing this church. Because by the time I came, there was a statue here. There used to be a statue. And even had a place, you, you can imagine, a place somewhere there. It was a statue which you had named Madonna of all names. And I ordered for, for I ordered that they take it out. The very first day, the first day I attended office, I assumed office, the 1st of November 2017, the first thing I did was take that statue out of St. Francis Chapel. Because I was told it was donated by some Catholic, who I think she was the wife of some vice chancellor, the statue. And, and by the way, there's a time someone preached here and said, I am sad that today we are worshiping without Madonna. Can you imagine that? No wonder the, no wonder Rumumba was, was worshiping Ongom. No wonder uh, Mary Stewart was worshiping Gongomes. And so we started binding those spirits. I rebuked them a number of times here. The spirit of Gongom would release fire even when they were my neighbors were not fearing them. We released fire, we destroyed them, and I'm praying that that statue will never stand there again, in Jesus' name. <laughs> How can a university student stand before a statue and start worshiping it? There's a time I was invited to speak to those boys, the freshers. And the chairman told them in my presence. And they were all made to sit somewhere like, you know. And the chairman said, I want to tell you guys that before you came here, it was Gongom who decided that you would be members of the great and mighty Rumumba. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all be, they were saying, mm, mm. a statue. 
And so we, we, could not, we could not afford to do that. I would have failed my job if I condoned such things. And I want to thank God for the, the, the administration, for the support that you have given me. I have been praying with, they gave me permission to pray with them every Monday morning. I would pray with the vice chancellor in his office, 7.30. And he gave the Lord his rightful place as number one, as the Lord of Makerere University. And so, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed. And he expected his disciples to pray. Matthew chapter 5, the three whens. When you give, when you pray, when you fast, I hope someone is fasting in this Lenten season. My first Lenten season here as a chaplain in 2018, I fasted for 40 days. And I mobilized the church to fast. And every morning, we would meet here every morning, and I preached 38 sermons of the 40 days. And the church was full. By the 40th day, this hall, the main sanctuary down here, was always full from 7 to 8 a.m before going for lectures. And that tradition has stayed. Please do not fast only between meals. There are some people who are not good at fasting in between meals. They fast between breakfast and lunch. Then they fast between lunch and supper. Then they fast now for a long time. And in the morning they say, let us break the fast. No. Pray fast. There is power. Matthew 17, 21. And it is missing in some of your Bible versions. Jesus said, this kind of demon, you see, it's not even there. NIV. You have to get it in King James. This kind of demon can only go by prayer and fasting and fasting. There are some demons that will never live until you fast. There are some habits that you will never break until you fast. So, mean business with the Lord. and begins with the closet, the time you spend in the closet. This is God. Jesus was God, 100% God, 100% man. But his life was a life of prayer. So he's praying with his disciples, and he takes three of them. He takes three of them. You see, Jesus began, Jesus was a crowd puller. And because of the miracles that he performed, people naturally followed him. People naturally followed him. So there were so many disciples that he had. And we read in John chapter 6, verse 26, that Jesus told this huge, this um, uh, mammoth gathering of disciples and said, I know that you are following me not because of anything else, but because of food. So the first disciples we are following Jesus because of food, because of bread, loaves of bread. Like the people who used to come here in midweek service in the early 90s there. Because you were few, uh, they, 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 at the time of Uncle Ben, they would give like a, a quarter of a loaf of bread during Holy Communion, <clears throat> and then they would give you the chalice. There was no COVID-19, there was no what. They would give you the chalice to drink. You would hold it yourself. I did that. You would hold it yourself and drink. Take a big, big sip. You would actually see someone swallowing like several times. <laughs> so a big sip and then you swallow like three times. 
And for some, that was their dinner. They, they, they were assured that Wednesday, midweek service, dinner is sorted. So Jesus said, you are following me because of bread. And then he says, you see, I am the bread of life. And the, the, the disciples got confused. They said, can we eat him? Can we? You need to read that. And most of them left him. They abandoned him. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus appointed 72 disciples. Some other verse says others. 72 others, meaning there were already disciples and Jesus appointed others. 72. So he began with many. The number is not known. And then 72. In Luke chapter 6 verse 12, then Jesus, the Bible says, one of those days, oh good, we have displayed it. Let's read it together. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray and spent some hours the night, he spent the night. He's the one who is tutored, by the way, nights of prayer. And you, you can pray here in the comfort of this nice room with fans and uh, with giant screens. And for him, he spent it in the, in the mountains, in the bushes, praying. So when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose how many? Twelve of them. So, from the many numbers are known, to 72, now to 12. But today we see Jesus now on a mountain with Peter, James, and John. Took Peter, John, and James. That's the order. So three. So meaning, even among the twelve, Jesus had three men that were the inner circle. They were in the inner circle of his disciples. And each one of you need some three men. And I don't mean men particularly with beards and uh, like Alan there, no. Three men represent many things, but you need people that you can confide in, that you can trust, that you can share your challenges with so that you may pray together, that you may open up to, not anybody, it's not anybody, you need to be led by the Lord, but you need, each one of us needs those, and I have them by the way, I have had them here in St. Francis Chapel, I've had them before I came here, and I will have them. Yes, wherever I go. So the question is, are you among them? Would Jesus say you are in the inner circle? Or would you say you are in his inner circle of disciples? Can Jesus trust you? Can you handle his secrets, the secrets of the kingdom? These men, the three, the trio, were present with Jesus during special events. They witnessed his transfiguration on the mountain. They witnessed Jesus raise the daughter of Jairus from the dead. They accompanied him while he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. They were with Jesus in his greatest moments, but they were also with Jesus in his darkest trials. So that's our point number one, the inner circle of the disciples of Jesus. Now, are you one of them? Number two, and there are three, prayer transforms. So we read in verse 29 that as he was praying, as Jesus was praying, the appearance 
of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Please note that as he was praying, the Bible doesn't say after he had finished praying. I know that's mentioned elsewhere in, in, in Luke 11. But this suggests that the appearance of his face that changed, the transformation that he experienced came while he was praying. And it, it seems to me, if I may remember my, my English language, it seems to me that it sounds like the present continuous. Present continuous. And we read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've gone there. You've gone there be before I asked. Very good. So, let's read it together. Keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking and you'll find. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will open. Now let's add one phrase. We're not changing the scripture, but we want to understand the, the scripture. And this is what, how we're going to say it. Verse 7 again. Keep on asking and it will keep on being given to you. Uh -huh. Keep on seeking and you'll keep finding. Yes. Keep on knocking. And the door will keep on opening to you. Verse 8. For everyone who keeps on asking, keeps on receiving. And he who keeps on seeking, keeps on finding. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door keeps on opening. So keep on keeping on. There is nothing like saying, I have prayed enough. The, the moment you ever feel like you have prayed enough is the very moment when you should start praying. You need to pray about your praying. Prayer transforms. It is prayer that has transformed Makere University. Of course, good administration. There's no doubt about that. Good student leadership. I thank God for the current leader, the guild president. He doesn't have the gift of height like I do, but he's a very wise man. He has said, and, and he belongs to uh, some strange political party, but, but he says, for me, this is, this is my, my philosophy is that we must resolve grievances amicably through dialogue as opposed to strikes and violence. The so-called way way. Now clap for that young man. Now th this, is, this is the power of prayer. Because someone from Noop saying that, that is real prayer. Prayer transforms individuals. Prayer transforms communities. Church history reveals that the, every revival that has ever taken place is preceded by prayer. And as they prayed, they also saw two men who talked with Jesus, Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah who had lied before, long ago. Moses died, he never crossed to the promised land, but now he appears in the promised land. And uh, uh, some scholars would say Moses was representing the law. Remember the Pentateuch, the first five books? And Elijah was representing the prophets and, and the Psalms. So they appear, they are talking to Jesus. Now Jesus' words are not recorded, they are not known. We don't know what he said. But what those two spoke are recorded here. 
And, and this came as a foretaste of the glory that Jesus was heading for. Now, I need to bring this to a close. Because I know that uh, time is moving pretty fast. But as Jesus is, as the glory of God comes upon Jesus, surrounds him and transforms him, and his robe is glittering. It's, you may think this is lightning. You can, I want you to visualize, by the way, that kind of picture. See what was happening there. And these disciples, these three who had taken up there, were sleeping, were asleep. They were asleep. How do I know that? Uh, because that is what the Bible says. That is verse uh, 32. Now Jesus takes you to a mountain and that you would pray and expect results. You know, be expectant. That's what we tell you when you're coming for nights of prayer. Be expectant. The Lord is going to meet you at your various points of need. They are asleep. So Peter and his companions were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory. And the two men standing with him. Tell your neighbor, you'll never behold the glory of God until you are fully awake. It looks like they had the gift of sleep, these men. Because in Matthew 26, from verse, you remember the, 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 the time Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane? He, he again asked them to come. Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, who are John and, and, and James, he took them, the very people. And while he was praying, he told, even told them, I feel sorrow. I am overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Please stay here and keep watch with me. Keep watch with me. Then he went a little further and, and put his face on the ground uh, or the stone. And, uh, and when he returned, the Bible says, he found them sleeping. He found them sleeping. What kind of sleep is this? I came across a little video clip, one, one, one minute and uh, I think a few seconds, and I want us to, to, to play it. Now he's going to fight with the one who is. Uh... So these are little monks. They 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 were in a, uh, a convent or whatever they call it, and they were being trained. And see how sleep has really really tortured this little boy. While others are worshiping, so t tell your neighbor, wake up from sleep, and pray. And, and, and verse 36, when the voice had ceased, you know, the Lord speaks and affirms his son the way he did when he was baptized. This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I have great delight. So when the voice had ceased, 
Jesus was found alone. So they kept quiet and told no one in those days of any of these things that they had seen. When they opened their eyes, when the scene was gone, they saw Jesus only. And see how Peter responds in verse 33. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, and somebody who has just woken up, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. This is someone who would speak and then think about what he has spoken later. The opportunity is gone. The, 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 the scene was not lasting. You missed it at the time when you were supposed to be wide, when your eyes were supposed to be wide open. I usually tease my, my son uh, in, in love here, uh, Aine, because I used to go with him to preach in schools. Gaza High School, King's College, Budo. He's a great uh, singer. So I would go with him so that he can mobilize the schools, the, the students, with his music and his guitar, and then I come and preach. So it would mean he's come with Alan Mhumza. So it would mean that they come to my house, because there were students here at Makere University when I was the youth a worker. They would come to my house in Namirembe, and then I would go with them to, to those schools. And uh, it looks like whenever we are praying to go or thanking God for returning, he would pray while watching. <laughs> he would pray. He's, he knows the scripture. Jesus said, watch and pray. So he's very good at it. I didn't know that he was looking at uh, my daughter there as we prayed. And now they are married. So, may the Lord help you to watch, be watchful. If there's anything I'd like to leave with you, is please pray. Pray like never before. And when your eyes are open, may you only behold the glory of God. May you only see Jesus alone. <laughs> Jesus alone. So when Uncle O is gone, see Jesus. When uh, you come to the night of prayer and Uncle O is not there, see Jesus. Amen? When you come to, to Sunday for the service and Uncle O is not there, see Jesus. Amen? So you need degrees. There's no doubt about that. I have two also. You need a wife, you need a husband, you need children, you need cars. But first things first. May you behold the glory of God uh, as that person uh, sang, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So may God uh, bless you, my friends. I want to pray. I, the bishop will be praying for us later, but I want us to pray now. Uh, please stand, because I just want to bless you. I, I am not going to, I am not going to shake dust off my feet. No, there is no dust. I only want to bless. Amen. Father, thank you for your word that has come to us. Indeed, we pray that we will be men and women of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for our guests that have come to join us in this service today. Some coming from over 8,000 miles away from Uganda. And, and whoever is here, some coming to bid farewell to me. I pray 
that you will make each one of them a man or a woman of prayer. I also pray that when they open their eyes, they will not see women, men, families, parents, children, vehicles, degrees, and all these things are important. But I pray that they will see Jesus. May they see Jesus in their dreams. May, see, may they see Jesus even in their studies. May they see Jesus in marketplaces. As they travel in taxis, in their private vehicles, on border borders. As they walk the streets of Kampala. May they see Jesus. And that is the inheritance I leave with you. That is the heritage of faith that you should embrace. And please seize the moment. Peter is now thinking of staying on the mountain top because of the experience they, ha they had had, but it was too late. Because an opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of that opportunity. And Jesus says, no, let's go down. Let's go. The, the experience on the top of the mountain is good, but the work is in the valley. And this is where the Lord is sending me to North Higazi. The work is in the valley. I have had enough mountain top experience here, and I'm going to work. Lord, I pray that you bless these, your children. I pray that St. Francis Chapel, Lord, will remain a beacon of light on this great hill and in this entire nation, Uganda. Lord, may your glory never depart from St. Francis Chapel. I pray that your glory will never depart from as many as are seeking your face. That it shall never be said of anybody here that they have become Ichabod. The Hebrew word for uh, the glory of God has departed. May the glory of God never depart from you. And may the Lord bless you always in your going out and in your coming in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Please be seated. Uh, I think I've overstretched it, but you don't have to worry. I'll not do it again. <laughs> I, don't do, I won't do it again. Um, and so over to you, uh, Madam. so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know that says the Lord How I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust Him more. Let's give God a mighty, mighty hand of praise. Thank you very much, the Reverend Honest Masasime, the Bishop elect. Uh, let's appreciate him for allowing God to use him. Let's clap our hands to the Lord for his ministry. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we are going to the next. 
next phase of this service. May I now invite that SAPO administrator, Ms. Sarah Minezero, to come and guide us in the next. Praise God. Praise God, church. Thank you, Uncle Ne, for the wonderful message. Today is a day of bittersweet. I am not so good with farewells. To invite Dr. Presiu, the chapel treasurer, he's going to take us through this next session. It's going to be a time to bless Uncle One and his family for the ministry that they have done here at St. Francis Chapel. And for this particular service, we have about four ministry groups that are going to bring their gifts here and have just a photo moment and then we'll also have the rest of the congregation bless and we'll direct on how it will be done praise the lord church praise the lord church how many people are happy uh, i know but we have been left with a powerful message when we look here we shall not see reverend uncle Oni, but we shall see jesus amen praise the lord such a wonderful opportunity this morning for us to be here saying farewell to our own i know many of you it is difficult but even when it is difficult let us still walk forward when called upon thank you at uh, basically commenting on what i'm coming to do so we are here to bless the first part was to thank god the second part is to thank plain and his family for the one So we are going to thank our chaplain and I know you have prepared so many different kinds of thanks. I have heard some people have prepared goats, some people have prepared cows, heifers, but there are also those who have come with envelopes and above all you have come with prayers and best wishes. So we want to welcome you, come with open hearts and let us bless our chaplain. It's difficult. I've talked to many people, but we are here to say thank you to God and thank you to you. Before us is the uh, Vice Chancellor, Finance and Admin, Professor Ali Naitri, and we want to be orderly when we are doing this. Okay, so right now, we are going to kindly request our Mugole and his entire family, Reverend Oni, step forward, sir, and take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the family that we are bidding farewell to. They look beautiful, isn't it? Church, don't they look beautiful? I am so happy that we are sending away a very beautiful family to the world to serve. Praise the Lord. Um, we know that one member is not here. Is she on the way? Okay, she was here early. So this is the family. We thank God for them. Let's give them a hand clap. And we bless you so much, Reverend Pony. Okay, so we are going to follow a certain order as we come and say thanks and give them uh, a gift. I know that all of us would want to come and shake their hands, but that will require a lot of time. So we kindly request you, as you come, you will, whatever gift you have, you will hand over. We have a team that is going to receive and you wave our uh, uh, 
a priest who is living today. Thank you. So this is the order that is going to be followed. First and foremost, we want to bless the chaplain as Mother's Union. So Mother's Union, you know it is important to start with the mothers because they are the ones that raise families, praise the Lord. So mothers, please step forward. Uh, I invite the chair, the president of Mother's Union, um, Madam, Mrs. Letitia Iguma. Please step forward with your team. Let's give them a hand clap. Let's give them a hand clap. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Wow. These ladies look good. And thank you so much. So Mother's Union is handing over their gift. And I don't see the cameraman. Please get this moment for us. It's really important. Thank you, thank you, Mother's Union. We are so grateful for your kind hearts. Thank you. Oh, it's so emotional. There are mothers who are tearing, but those are tears of joy. Thank you, thank you, Reverend Nesmas. That's how you have blessed his mother. a photo moment for this. Thank you. Uh, I think we need mothers. I know you can not accept that he is going, but Mother's Union. Let's give them another hand clap for honor. Uh, there can't be Mother's Union without Father's Union. So let me ask the fathers to step up. Step forward, Father's Union. Please, let's give fathers a hand clap. Let's welcome them. Led by none other than the chairperson of Father's Union. Mr. Moses, Engineer Moses Flavako, thank you very much, sir, and your entire team, welcome, sir. Thank you, let's continue to give them a hand clap, let's, let's clap for them. moment with Father's Union. Thank you. I know there are many Father's Union members and you are represented here aptly. I also join.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's clap for Father's Union as they go back again. Thank you. I have seen the gift is very, very fat. Thank you. We have Christian Women's Women Fellowship. Please step forward. Yes. They are members of Christian Women's Fellowship. Up to Christian Women Fellowship. Thank you so much. We appreciate the gift. Actually, there are two gifts. Thank you very much. So, we are now going to have the rest of you come forward. Oh, sorry about this. There is Makerere College School. Makerere College School, are you here? Yes, Makere. Oh, wonderful. We have got our own young people with a very nice gift. Reverend Onesmas, please receive that from. And, and these are the OBs and OGs of our bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Look at those smiles. These young people are so, so happy to come. Let's get a photo moment for this. Thank you. We see what the Lord has done. I think I think the chaplain was passing over the anointing to the young man and lady to become like him. Thank you very much. So we we move now to the rest of the congregation and we are going to position baskets because we are so many a lot of time if we are to hand over individually. So, ladies and gentlemen, we okay, so you will all just walk in. If you are this side, you walk in through there, there will be baskets positioned. If you are at the gallery, please just wait. Your basket will come. Up there. Thank you. Okay, so I'll leave it to choir to continue. Thank you.
such large numbers and thank you for your prayers. Some people have blessed them. I saw people saying, God bless you, and that is really good. So, thank you. And now, we would like to invite the Joint Himino Choir. Joint Himino Choir is part of us, and they have a wonderful present to give to the chaplain. Joint Himino Choir, step forward. Let's give them a hand clap and welcome them so much. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Let's give them a hand clap. Let's continue. Let's not get tired. Church, I want to admit that there are moments when you are happy and you are sad, both happy and sad, but I want to focus on the happiness. I'm not given to shedding tears, by the way. But if it happens, <laughs> it will be tears of joy, <laughs> not tears of sadness. But church, I want us to give God the glory for the ministry. I want to accept if it wasn't for if it wasn't for God, we would not be here. When you listen to Uncle Ones' testimony, it is miracle after miracle. And when I got the news that Uncle Only had been appointed a bishop, I had to clarify which Onesimus were they talking about. <laughs> and it was our dear Uncle O. And I remember Uncle O's proclamation of the miracle of a tortoise in the tree. If you find a tortoise in the tree, what do you ask? Do you ask how long it took to walk there? Someone put it there. But we have a blessed tortoise. <laughs> tortoise is just a figurative replacement for the miracle that God can do when his hand is on your life. And we have seen God put Uncle One in a position of yet higher responsibility, but of a greater degree of glory for his glory. So Uncle One, on behalf of the church, we just want to bless you and Tiflo, we want to bless you and the family of the Onesma says, we want to bless you. We want to say that the God who has always been able to prove himself true, starting of testimony in your lives. I remember when you came and became chaplain, you acknowledged it was God. And one thing we always fail to do when we succeed is to acknowledge where the success came from. But we thank God that you acknowledged and put God 
and gave the glory to God and put the church in the place where the Lord could then use you as a vessel. And that is why we fill the church today. And that is why our overnights are full. And that is why even during COVID, our collections went up. Yes, we need to thank the Lord. But we want to say that the fact is you are going. And the fact is we are staying. But we are not orphans because you have shown us the shepherd. And we want to ask the shepherd to bless you in a special way. And I'm going to the church to stand up. To bless Onesmus and Antiphil and their family. And we're going to say that the Lord be your shepherd. May you never want. May the fear of the Lord be your source of wisdom. And may the schemes of the enemy never find their way in your presence. May the mighty arm of God, his right arm that fights battles for us and battles that we never lose, always be at the forefront of your waking and your sleeping. May your bands be full. May the territory that God is giving you expand and be fruitful and multiply. And may you never hunger or neither fast, but always have the fruit of the goodness of God in your lips as a testimony. And as Bishop of North Kikesi, we proclaim that mighty signs and wonders of his grace and his power shall transform that region and they shall know that the Lord, or the, Lord the God of Onesimus and Antiflo is a mighty God. He's a God of goodness. He's a God who never fails and he's faithful and he neither slumbers and he neither sleeps. May health be your portion. May finances stress you and overtake you. And may the masses of God always stand for you in every court, in every platform, in every room, in every pulpit. May heaven say, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we are prayed. Amen. You may have your seat. And I now take this honor to welcome the Deputy Vice Chancellor to come and make some remarks on behalf of the Vice Chancellor. You're welcome, Seva. The, the Bishop Perect of North Higazi Diocese and of course my friend, and your dear wife, my sister, uh, the children, the clergy who are here, uh, all of you in your respective capacities. Uh, I can zero Nkwasa, who was my cohort mate, were at, at campus around the same time, and the husband is also an engineer like me. The wife of the chancellor, uh, she's around, kindly stand, some people may not know you. Uh, that's the wife of my boss. Of UCU. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Peter Chiza, uh, my long time friend as well. Uh, members of management, uh, professors who are here, uh, and all members of staff, all the students of McKay University. All the students of McKay University, all the stakeholders. Of course, I also recognize that they are ancestors. In school, they call them ancestors. Uh, those who, are, who completed McKay a long time ago, but they continue to fellowship at McKay University. One thank you for coming and for 
blessing the children, I mean the, the young people who are here and always providing a way for them. So I'm standing here, I've, I've just been uh, given short notice, I was not prepared for a speech, I don't have any written speech, but on Uncle One I can't fail to say something. Uh, because Uncle One um, has been, is known to me for a long time. But uh, I think I even started with a brother. He has a brother who is a, a reverend, uh, also an ordained person uh, in the church, and he's the one actually I worked very closely with before. And he's the one who like introduced me more to Oni. And worked together very well and pushed the church work forward. And that is in the diocese, in the, in the parish where I come from. Uncle Oni and I come from the same district. Uh, and so there's uh, some relationship there. And, and uh, I've always told Uncle Oni, and I've always addressed him as a bishop, or, or, you know, or bishop to be, I always said that, and he can testify. So for me now as a professor of civil engineering, I can now see myself also as a, prof as a professor <laughs> in, in a, calling him a bishop, and it comes to pass. I mean, what, it's a very amazing. This is a real life story. Uh, so, uh, Uncle One has been our family uh, priest. I don't know how many occasions of my own family has officiated that. Uh, at a graduation of my sons, and uh, at a house, housewarming, uh, and at when he was elected bishop, even my mother called me very early in the morning, I think around 5.30, and said that our friend has been made a bishop. <laughs> very early in the morning. So, I, you know, there's a lot we can say about Uncle One. Uncle One, uh, you'll be missed at Makere. Uh, in the position I am as a deputy vice chancellor, someone was already addressing me as, as vice chancellor. I'm not. I'm, I'm deputy vice chancellor acting, uh, but uh, in the position I am, uh, and that's the line that the chaplaincies also fall. So, uh, therefore, I remember last year we had an opportunity to discuss and renew his contract. So, actually, he had uh, another tenure of about four or five years at Makere. And I remember in our discussions, uh, of course, there is evaluation. It's not automatic that you renew the contract of someone. We could have said no, he's, he's, has been a non performer, and therefore we could have terminated or we could have stopped the renewal of the contract. But I remember it was very, very overwhelming in our discussions that Uncle O should serve another term. So, <laughs> when it, now when it came uh, as a surprise that uh, he's, he's elected again a bishop, uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion and say, eh, we have really lost someone of substance. <laughs> we have really lost someone of substance. Not losing the sense of death, but losing the sense of uh, him going away to serve in another capacity. Of course, it, it comes with a lot of nostalgia. Uh, someone performing very well, and now he's taken to another place. It's very exciting, but also very sad. This is why we say sweet and sour. Those who, li who like the Chinese cuisine, sweet and sour. It is sweet that you are going, but also sour in the sense of Makerere community that uh, you, you're also going. Uh, so, his performance has been stellar. Moreover, that's why I think you have been elected a, a bishop. This is the first time in the history of Makere that a chaplain is elevated to the rank of bishop. <laughs> and and uh, we, we don't take it lightly. I mean, you are now in the realms of history uh, that you are the first chaplain to be elevated to the rank of bishop. So, therefore, we pray for you. Uh, and uh, like you've said, when Makerere, I mean, in the last five years, we've not had serious strikes. And it's partly, it's largely attributed to people like you, who are able to engage with the students, pray with them, and the staff alike, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, make them change their minds from the bad lines to the good lines. So, uh, and, and it's going to be a challenge for us, and we've already discussed it, it's going to be a challenge for us to get a, a suitable replacement to, to stand in the shoes of Uncle O. It's already, of course, we're already discussing, and I know that uh, the, the, the Archbishop is the one to nominate the names, but then here we've got also to sift through 
the, the, the process is that the Archbishop sends three names, and uh, us as management and council, we, we, we sit and see who, who best suits. So we pray for that. I think as you've told us, let's keep praying. Let's pray that we we'll get a very good replacement who will be able to stand in your shoes. Um, as McKinney University, we, I think we're not, I think we're preparing for the other event. Uh, and the members maybe should know that uh, being a chaplain at McKinney is a position of McKinney University actually. And even these chaplains and the, you know, the whole setup belongs to McKinney University. Uh, so we'll be uh, going for the consecra consecration and we shall be making some, uh, you know, some uh, prize or whatever there. But for now, I want to take also the singular honor to take a photograph with my friend. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want to, and, and as I've told you, in the, in the line of supervision, actually, I've been his uh, boss in a way. Because I supervise, uh, I supervise his boss. But now things have turned. Uh, and uh, I've also been calling him my, I mean, I've been, you are chaplain, you remember? Self-appointed chaplain. Now things have changed a lot. <laughs> So I think it's, a, it's a, a, a moment for me to take a photograph with you, Uncle O, and your dear wife, my sister. My, uh, the wife is actually my sister, very close. So uh, it's an honor for me to take that, and uh, thank you very much. Maybe on that note, as a family of the Mwanachis, also give you a goat. Thank you very much. Let's give our Deputy Vice Chancellor a very big hand clap for that speech. And as he prepares to take a photo, we really thank God for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. I hand clap again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Vice Chancellor, for those kind remarks. Uncle One, you have impacted lives in many different ways and thank you for that spirit a uh, couple of days ago i was thinking about uncle one leaving and i actually prayed i wanted to pray for him but i saw i had a voice saying that why not talk to the archbishop to make him a bishop of makere and then i said that's not possible and then i said okay maybe we create a new diocese called Academic Institutions. <laughs> yes. And we request the Archbishop to create it and then post him back here as his home. Amen. Amen. Take but we are here to say thank you. <laughs> we have been honored to have been served by you and Auntie Flo and your entire family. These people are going to miss you. But... We will continue to look out for you as we know you'll also keep coming back. So thank you very much, St. Franciscans, for your overwhelming gifting of our bishop as he lives. To God be the glory. We now hand back over to church. I've been asked by Reverend Scopia to bring the mic straight to Uncle O. As we resume the last bit, which is completion of the service. Thank you. God bless you.
not all the not all the not not all the and thank you so so much for the love you know the things that make me cry are like these ones yes she brought the money um, we thank you for allowing us to be leaders among you and especially because we were part of the congregation and all of a sudden we became leaders among you and you honored us and you loved us so, so much and you shared your lives with us and we are grateful. I read somewhere that it's only cows that drink from the same trough that splash mud at each other. Only cows that drink from the same trough that splash mud at each other. So if we splashed mud at any of you, or if any of you did, that is water under the bridge. And where we didn't meet your expectation, we ask you to please forgive us. We are only human. Please forgive us where we didn't meet your expectation, and we will always love you as we continue to make the gospel of Jesus Christ attractive. God bless you. Thank you. May I now request the bishop to step forward and bless us all as he sends us out. Let us stand. For me, God will in your still having some time with us here. And so I will be giving you blessings from time to time. But this friend of ours, this is going to be his final blessing to us as our chaplain. But before he does it, let us offer him into God's hands. Father, we thank you for reminding us about the importance of prayer. May we find Jesus Christ as we pray, Lord. And I thank you for the ministry that our servant has given to us in your name. Thank you for the remarks we have heard about him. And the Lord will say thank you. We have no words which we can use to say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we offer him and his family in your hands, that Lord, you will be before them as they go to know such Jesus diocese. May they find you there. May they witness for you there. May they become light and salt among those people there, Lord. Be with them and be with us as we stay behind 
in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And so as we conclude, as the bishop uh, so has said, let us pray the prayer of protection and the blessing. So pray with me and after me. I, Onesimus, I sign myself with the cross of Jesus. I also do it on behalf of my loved ones. I surround myself with the blood of the Lamb. I surround myself with the light of his cross and with the light of his resurrection. I put on the full armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. I put on the shoes of readiness for the gospel of peace. I take the shield of faith to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I put on the helmet of salvation. I take the sword of the spirit, which is the living word of God. And I also pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. In the name of Jesus, I declare there is no weapon formed against me. All my loved ones that will prosper and every tongue that accuses me, I condemn. In the name of Jesus, I declare, therefore, there is no power of Satan, no power from hell, no demon, no principality, no magic, no sorcery, no witchcraft, no enchantment, no mayembe, no power of evil whatsoever shall come through to harm me or my loved ones. In the name of Jesus, as a child of God who is on transit to heaven, I declare that I am too blessed to be cast, too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. I am untouchable by Satan. I am unbewitchable by Satan. I am unstoppable. And in the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror. Amen. And so, beloved, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the roads of victory, healing, prosperity, and increase rise to meet you. And may the rains fall softly on your various fields. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the blessing which makes rich and which comes with no sorrow, may that blessing be your portion on a daily basis, bringing to fruition all your dreams, prospects, and aspirations. May that blessing come strongly upon this university. We thank God for the... Uh, the, the, the wife of the Chancellor who is here representing him, for the de Deputy Vice Chancellor and, and Council Member and others, students, faculty, may you receive that blessing. May that blessing be upon every family represented here, and may that blessing go ahead of you and scatter darkness from before your path and remain with you all now and forever and ever. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let us now go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. Amen.